James Webb Space Telescope. Key facts. Launch date, December 25, 2021. Cost, $10 billion. Orbit, JWST will orbit the Sun, around the second Lagrange point, nearly 1 million miles from Earth. Primary mirror size, 21.3 feet across. Sunshield, 69.5 feet by 46.5 feet. Mass, 14,300 pounds. To put the Webb telescope's size into context, it is as tall as a three-story building and as long as a tennis court. In fact, it was so big that it had to be folded like origami so that it will fit inside the rocket that it was launched on. It unfolded once it was deployed, starting with its sunshield first. The telescope's unprecedented sensitivity to infrared light will help astronomers understand how galaxies assemble over billions of years. It will be able to see through dust clouds, where stars and planetary systems are formed. Further, it will be able to study the atmospheres of planets outside our solar system, called exoplanets. Before it began its scientific work, the Webb telescope underwent a six-month preparation period when its instruments were calibrated. But toward the end of May, it was struck by a small meteoroid, which knocked one of the telescope's gold-plated mirrors out of alignment. Despite this, Webb was still performing at a level that exceeds all mission requirements. Of course, mission scientists had to make delicate readjustments to the impacted mirror segment to help cancel out any distortion that may have been caused by the impact. The event had no effect on the schedule to release the first images of the telescope. According to NASA, the James Webb Space Telescope will focus on four main areas. First light in the universe, assembly of galaxies in the early universe, birth of stars and protoplanetary systems, and planets including the origins of life. Apart from science missions that are already planned for the Webb Telescope, there is also a chance that it could help make unanticipated and unexpected discoveries in the future. For example, scientists did not know about dark energy when the Hubble Space Telescope was launched in 1990. But now, it is one of the most exciting fields in astrophysics after its existence was confirmed using Hubble observations. The James Webb Space Telescope is the product of an impressive international collaboration between NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. According to NASA, the JWST involved over 300 universities, organizations and companies across 29 U.S. states and 14 countries. The nominal duration for the James Webb Space Telescope is five years, but the goal is 10 years according to ESA. The Space Telescope was previously known as the Next Generation Space Telescope and was renamed the James Webb Space Telescope in September 2002. The JWST is named for former NASA Chief James Webb. Webb took charge of the space agency from 1961 to 1968, retiring just a few months before NASA put the first man on the moon. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope launched on December 25, 2021, from ESAS launch site at Kourou in French Guiana, at 7.20 a.m. EST, aboard an Arian Space Arian 5 rocket. Then on January 8, 2022, NASA announced that the James Webb Space Telescope had successfully unfolded the giant primary mirror and is now fully deployed. The James Webb Space Telescope reached its final destination, L2, the second Sun-Earth Lagrange point, which it will orbit, on January 24, 2022 after traveling nearly a million miles or 1.5 million kilometers. Lagrange points are gravitationally stable points in space. The James Webb Space Telescope's first science images were officially released by NASA during a live event on July 12. At 10.30 a.m. EDT, they included the cosmic cliffs in the Carina Nebula, the striking Southern Ring Nebula, Stefan's Quintet and an analysis of the atmospheric composition of the hot gas giant exoplanet WASP-96b. The JWST is equipped with four science instruments that will enable observations in visible, near-infrared and mid-infrared wavelengths. Every object that is being observed with the James Webb Telescope is light years away. This means that we are observing these objects as they used to be years ago. For example, the Southern Ring Nebula is 2,000 light years away which means that the image we see of it today will depict how it looked 2,000 years ago. The image of SMACS 0723, which was released earlier by NASA and the U.S. President, shows us the cluster of galaxies as it was 4.6 billion years ago. What makes this image so mind-blowing is how small it is, and how large it is, at the same time. It's small in the sense that this image represents only a teensy tiny portion of the night sky. Imagine you are holding out a grain of sand at arm's length. The area of sky that grain covers, that's the size of the area captured in the above image. But it's huge in the sense that nearly every object in this image is a galaxy. Think about that, in every pinprick of sky, there are thousands and thousands of galaxies, at least. 
The first image from the web has been shared from NASA's Goddard Space Center and is the same deep field image of SMACS 0723. Some of the cosmic objects in the image are pictured as they were 13.1 billion years ago. Webb took four days to create the image, compared to the 10 days taken by Hubble for a lower-resolution image. The telescope's NIR cam has brought distant galaxies into sharp focus, letting us see tiny, faint structures that have never been seen before including star clusters and diffuse features. While viewing the youngest galaxies in the image, we are looking back in time to within a billion years after the Big Bang. Another special feature is the prominent arcs in the field. The powerful gravitational fields of galaxy clusters bend light rays from distant galaxies behind them, causing an effect known as gravitational lensing. Stars have been captured with prominent diffraction spikes because they appear brighter at shorter wavelengths. Second image, WASP-96b spectrum. The second image is a spectrum of the gas giant planet WASP-96b, located nearly 1,150 light-years from Earth. This is the first spectrum of an exoplanet taken by Webb. It reveals wavelengths that haven't been revealed before. The spectrum reveals telltale signatures of water vapor on the planet. The planet is closer to its star than Mercury is to our Sun. This is the most detailed near-infrared transmission spectrum of an exoplanet atmosphere captured to date. It also covers an exceptionally wide range of wavelengths including visible red light and a portion of the spectrum that has not previously been accessible from other telescopes. This part of the wavelength spectrum is very sensitive to water as well as key life molecules like oxygen, methane and carbon dioxide. These are not immediately obvious in the WASP-96b spectrum and could potentially be detected in future observations of other exoplanets made by Webb. Third image, final performance of a dying star. The third image is a near-infrared image of the Southern Ring Nebula or the Eight Burst Nebula, a planetary nebula surrounding a dying star. The stars at the center are prominent in the image. From Webb's NIR cam on the left while the image from Webb's MIRI on the right shows for the first time that the second dimmer star is surrounded by dust. The brighter star is younger and will probably project its own planetary nebula in the future. As the pair orbits each other, they stir the pot of gas and dust, causing asymmetrical patterns. Each shell of gas in the image represents the time when the fainter star lost some of its mass. The widest shells of gas toward the outer areas of the image were ejected earlier. The ones closest to the star are the most recent. Scientists can look into the history of the system by tracing these ejections. Fourth image, shedding light into galaxy evolutions and black holes. The fourth image is an enormous mosaic of Stefan's quintet, and the largest image taken by Webb to date. It covers over 150 million pixels and is constructed from 1,000 separate image files. The image shows the dramatic impact of huge shockwaves as one of the galaxies smashes through the cluster. It also shows a black hole in the quintet at a detail never seen before. Even though they are called a quintet, only four of the galaxies are actually close together and caught in a cosmic dance. The leftmost galaxy is well in the foreground in comparison with the other four. It is about 40 million light-years away from the Earth while the other four are about 290 million light-years away. But even that distance is fairly close in cosmic terms. Studying such nearby galaxies like these helps scientists better understand the dynamics in a more distant universe. Such tightly packed groups might have been more common in the early period of the universe when their superheated material may have fueled highly energetic black holes called quasars. Even as we see the quintet today, the topmost galaxy harbors an active supermassive black hole 24 million times the mass of the Sun. Fifth image, cosmic cliffs and the blistering birthplace of stars. The last and final image released by NASA shows a star-forming region in the Carina Nebula called NGC 3324, and its mountains and valleys speckled with glittering stars. Captured in infrared for the first time by Webb, the new image shows previously invisible areas of star birth. The image resembles craggy mountains on a moonlit evening. Actually, it is the edge of the giant gaseous cavity within the region of the nebula and some of the tallest peaks in the nebula are around 7 light years high. The cavernous area in the image was carved from the nebula by the intense ultraviolet radiation and stellar winds from extremely hot young stars located in the center of this bubble above the area shown in the image. This young star's intense ultraviolet radiation is slowly eroding it away. Some pillars tower about the glowing wall of gas, resisting the star's radiation. What looks like steam rising from the mountains is actually hot ionized gas and hot dust streaming away from the nebula because of radiation. This is just the beginning of the Webb scientific mission. In the future, scientists hope to use it to see the very first galaxies which held the very first stars and understand a time period called cosmic dawn when the universe became transparent to starlight for the first time. Before cosmic dawn, the universe was shrouded by a dense 
obscuring fog of primordial gas, as the National Science Foundation explains. There's no light that reaches our telescopes from this time which is called the Cosmic Dark Ages. There is some background radiation from the Big Bang called the Cosmic Microwave Background. A faint glow that shines to us from before the Dark Ages, but for the most part. The Dark Ages is a blank spot in our timeline of the universe. Astronomers hope the web will help them understand the end of the Dark Ages and figure out what caused this fog to lift. Ushering in the Cosmic Dawn, the web, at its most basic function, allows us to see more of the universe and farther back in time. This is just the beginning. There's so much more to see. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel for more exciting videos.